Hey guys, today I want to talk about the potential of the skulk block for large scale mining. So a lot of blocks can be converted into skulk block, which can be instant mined. So some of the blocks that also can be converted into skulk are deep slate and endstone, both of which you can't instant mine. So even if you have the best possible pickaxe and a haste tube beacon, you still are not able to instant mine those two blocks. In case of the deep slate, you already can use a trick, you can convert it into moss, but this wouldn't work with the endstone, so you want to convert it into moss because this is also instaminable. But so far there was no way around mining endstone the slow way, unless you would want to use TNT or TNT duping. But with the skull block we finally have the potential to maybe speed up the process of mining out a large endstone area. Just a few weeks ago my friends and I actually spent a lot of time in survival removing a 16 chunk area at the center of the main end island. So we did this for the 4 before chunk challenge. I think it was roughly about a quarter million endstone blocks that we mined. It took several evenings to finally finish this. So now I'm of course wondering how much we could have maybe sped this up or how feasible it is to just convert everything into skulk and mine that instead. So the idea would be that we have an enderman farm, all the endermen that would rain down in the middle, would land next to the, to the skulk catalyst here, and then the skulk spreads to the side until uh, we roughly covered the whole 16 chunk area, and then we would take it out layer by layer. All right, so I just actually need to turn on mob spawning. I already got a second account positioned right above the farm. So the idea is that we're roughly about 125 blocks above uh, the area, so only enderman could spawn at the farm. And it's already happening. So enderman fall down here and all of the endstone gets converted. Downside is, um, I'm not entirely sure how long it will take to spread to every single corner. This could maybe take a while. So this is what it looks like after about running it for 10 minutes, mostly spread, but here the corners are not covered at all. So I'm a bit worried that this is taking a bit too long. Um, while this is running, it's probably also best uh, to just wait until it's completely finished. Could maybe instead of having just a single opening here in the middle, um, have four in total. After about one hour of waiting, it looks like this. I'd say this is good enough for now. It's only a couple blocks in the corners that haven't been covered, but I'd say waiting a full hour is a bit too long. I'm gonna adjust the enderman farm, but first I want to actually take out one layer of the skulk blocks here, because I'm wondering um, if the shriekers will give us a lot of trouble spawning the warden. So I got myself some good gear. I think my plan is whenever we run into a warden, I'm just gonna fly away with the elytra. All right, there we already got the first one. So let's see, this is definitely going pretty quick. You can also insta mine triggers and sensors. This is definitely so much better than yeah, having to mine the end stone. So if you're insta mining, you can actually break a block every single tick. Well, uh, without yeah, the skull, or if you mine the end stone, you can only break a block every eight stick roughly. So insta mining is about eight times faster. Okay, there's a warden. I'm not gonna actually pay much attention to it. I mean, with the Nazarite armor I'm having right now, you can definitely take one hit. Yeah, I don't need to worry about it too much. We're pretty great. Also with all the XP we're getting here, this is an actually nice side effect. Don't even need to worry about our hole breaking. Okay, there we got a warden. Should maybe just move over here. Okay, with such a huge area, probably also gonna have the issue that we will have multiple wardens. Yep, game allows that. But there's a limit of only one warden in a certain area, and I actually got hit. And we weren't careful enough. Maybe let's try a different strategy. We could also just run around and get rid of all the shriekers first. This might actually be a better idea to invest maybe a minute to do this and then we can safely mine yeah i think this is still better than mining all the endstone really doesn't take long okay that should be all of the shriekers and now we can just mine the rest of the skulk 
So far it's going pretty great. What was a bit of a downside was that the Skulk also spread up the walls here and there's even another Shrieker. And I mean so far I haven't really been a problem but a yeah, Warden that spawns gets quite annoying because you need to wait like a minute until he's finally gone and even if you would try to outrun him he chases after you. Um, so it's probably best if we actually would prevent the Skulk from spreading up the walls first. Just need to get rid of that enemy now. Uh, um, so I'm also gonna take out one row of the blocks here in the wall. I'm gonna place something like honey in there so it can't spread up anymore. Okay, so that's how the enderman farm looks like now. We got four endermites that the enderman could rush towards. So per catalyst, of course, we're getting fewer endermen. But I think overall the skulk should still spread a bit quicker. So I'm doing another tick warp again. So let's see how this looks like after five minutes. And there we are. It has been completely covered in five minutes. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. Um, would probably be better if it's only gonna be two minutes or so. So maybe instead of having four animals, we could also go for nine or even 16 for each chunk one. But overall, I think this is acceptable. So we could just do something else for five minutes, get a cup of tea or coffee, come back and then mine the next layer. The honey barrier was also successful, no new shriekers or sensors are growing on the outside. Okay, so next layer, it's probably best to find the shriekers quick, quickly again. In case we get a warden, we can always fly away. I think the cooldown is roughly a minute. If the warden doesn't attack a player for one minute, then he will also despawn again. Okay, so that's actually pretty decent. We would run into one issue, so the further down we go with our mining, uh, the first down we also need to go with the AFK spot. So you would need to stand here above the farm. The idea is if you stand high enough, then Enderman couldn't spawn on the outside of the end island. But you would need to go one block lower each time. And eventually, yeah, Enderman could also spawn on the outside. I already started placing on a lot of torches. So what you basically need to do, you need to light up the whole, t whole end island with torches. Uh, I was also thinking, instead of having four drop shoots, or uh, 9 or 16, you could maybe also keep the one and just uh, distribute the charge to a couple of entry points. But I was testing in creative and I was quickly realized there would be a problem. So the problem is the further away we transport the charge from the catalyst, the quicker it decays. So you got a little setup which is going to quickly summon a couple of ravagers that we kill with fall damage. And then we can use the data get command on the catalyst to see what happens with the charge. So we got two, one is holding 399 at this point and the other one 395. So we spawned 20 Ravagers each, which gave uh, 20 XP. And yeah, we could just follow this. We could also tick warp this again. So currently, since we've been like four blocks of the catalyst, uh, the charge would decay at the same rate. But if I open this trapdoor here real quick, let the charge go over here. And then just do a quick, what should we do? Uh, maybe 600 tick tick warp. You can already see there's a difference. So if you look at the charges now, this one here still holds 385, but the other one is already down to 184. And it's just a couple more blocks away from the catalyst, so it decays much quicker. If you go further out, the charge would decay even quicker. It's about 120 blocks long now. Can use the data get command again. Down to 377. Still, the decay is by the way random. But at the end, we're already 95, 24, and now it goes really quick and it's gonna be gone. Three left, and one left, and it's gone. So it's not, unfortunately, not really an option to transport a charge a very long distance. Would be really cool though if you could somehow prevent the charge from decaying because then we could also use this maybe for mining in the overworld. So we could make a mob farm somewhere up in the sky and yeah, have some skulk charge lines to distribute it further. So we could even yeah, make a splitter to either send it this way or the other way, or split it up 50-50. 
I also tried it out here a little bit. So let's see what it does. Definitely spreads a little bit. There might be some potential, but this was 400 XP now. I guess as long as there's new blocks converted, actually it's working pretty well. Ah. Actually going pretty well right here, right now. But once you have a little bit of a skulk floor, then the charge is also gone pretty quickly. So there's definitely some potential for deep slate mining with charge blocks as well. But in my opinion, um, I'm quite sure using moss is still a bit more convenient. So you don't need to worry about building a mob farm and building lines, distribute the charge somehow, which decays too quickly. I think the moss thing is still a little bit Better. But it would also be cool if the charge would be an option as well, because it would be a bit more automatic. As long as we can't push dispensers around to bone mill the moss, this definitely has potential to be more automatic. So to sum it up, I definitely won't be doing this for multiple hours anymore if I have the option to just convert everything into skulk. Because TNT duping is still an option, it's probably the way to go. But yeah, the second best probably is converting the endstone into skulk and mine that instead. Not entirely sure about the deep slate. Might be best to just use bone meal because it requires less infrastructure and less effort. But there's probably also some potential for the skulk blocks. Overall, yeah, there's so much you can actually do with the skulk blocks. Loving it so far. Right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.